In this video, we are going to look at the problem of timing analysis, in particular to understand where delays in circuits, combinational circuits as well as sequential elements come from and what they imply for the performance of the overall large digital system. So the outline, we'll first look at where delays come from. Transistors have capacitance, lookup tables have capacitance, currents are used to charge those capacitances and so on. What are the relationships between this delay and various aspects of the circuit itself, like the supply voltage, the size of the transistors and so on. We'll then take up the problem of timing analysis by taking an example and show how the critical path can be computed for a circuit that consists of both sequential as well as combinational elements. Briefly touch upon the topic of large scale timing analysis without going into algorithms and just look at the core idea of pipelining very briefly. So where does a delay in a circuit come from? Well, the picture over here shows a basic CMOS inverter with its output essentially going into a capacitance. And the picture that we can think of over here is a inverter, which in turn could be driving another inverter. We don't really care what the second stage is. All that matters is for all practical purposes, it looks like a capacitance. The reason for looking like a capacitance, of course, is the fact that this is the gate terminal of one or more transistors, which is an insulating uh, terminal. And when you have insulators with conductors on either side, it essentially behaves like a capacitance. There are of course other components to this as well, which add up and ultimately present some kind of a load capacitance, which the inverter that we are interested in needs to drive. The terminology that we normally use is that the first stage, the one that is actually trying to change the value at the output is called the driver. And the second stage is usually called the load which means that this capacitance is usually called the load capacitance. Now, what happens, for example, when the input of the driver goes from one to zero, it means that the output must go from zero to one, which basically means, as we know, that the PMOS transistor has turned on and is then going to drive current from the supply voltage VTD into the output capacitance. In this case, on the right-hand side, we can see that this is CL and this current source is the PMOS transistor. Now in this figure, we have shown it as a constant current source. In practice, of course, it is not a constant. It would depend on the actual supply voltage, the gate to source voltage, and also the drain to source voltage. But as a rough approximation, we can sort of treat it as roughly constant to a first level of approximation. Which means that we effectively have a situation where we have a current source trying to drive a capacitance and the way that this would cause the output voltage is to increase like this because we would essentially have the current I would be equal to CL dV by dt and therefore this dV by dt would be equal to I by C which in this case is a constant and that would imply a linear increase. Now, of course, the output voltage cannot uh, keep on increasing. As soon as the output voltage reaches VDD, effectively the PMOS would also go, would stop conducting and therefore no further current would flow, which means that the output would then tip off at this. In practice, of course, we would have a more graded transition, but as a first order approximation, we can sort of treat it as a simple ramp followed by a clipping. Now, the thing that we can see over here is the larger the value of I, the faster the rate of change. And the larger the value of C, slower the rate of change. In other words, a large value of load capacitance will mean that it takes more time for the output to charge, while a large value of the current, driver current, will mean that it takes less time for the output to charge. So therefore, we can sort of understand, at least at the top level, that the delay through this gate is going to be proportional to the load capacitance and inversely proportional to the driver current. What does this in turn mean? A large output gate would mean that 
I have a large load capacitance. Whereas a large driver gate would mean that it has a wider transistor and therefore is able to deliver a larger current. Unfortunately, this is where the contradiction comes. If I make the driver gate larger so that it can drive a larger current, it will in turn present a higher load capacitance to its previous stage, the one that is driving it. On the other hand, if I make the load capacitance smaller, it means that the next stage after that load capacitance, the next stage after that inverter, will struggle to charge because the small load capacitance corresponds to a small driving current and therefore the delay over there would increase. Ultimately, how we choose the size of various transistors becomes a fairly interesting engineering trade-off problem. Now what about sequential elements? Sequential elements also have some form of delay, but the most important parameters over here are not the straightforward propagation delay through the circuit. Although that is also one of the delays, which is usually called the clock to output delay. The clock to output delay basically says that after the clock edge has arrived, it takes a certain amount of time before the D out has stabilized to its output value, D out or Q. On the other hand, there is also this window over here around the clock edge, which is essentially known as the capture window. What this capture window indicates is that for some amount of time before a clock edge arrives at a flip-flop, the data input to the flip-flop must remain stable and unchanging. And similarly, for some amount after the clock edge has arrived as well, the data should not change. This latter part is slightly counterintuitive. You may wonder why it is necessary for the data to remain unchanged after the clock edge. It turns out that is because there is still some settling of data internal to the flip-flop which needs to happen. And if the data changes too close to the clock edge, it can actually mess up the data that is stored inside the flip-flop. The short version is that for a small window around the clock edge, the data should remain stable so that it gets safely captured into the inside of the flip-flop and comes out properly as something that can then be seen by the next stages. So what does this mean? Combinational elements have direct delays of their own, whereas sequential elements also have something called the setup hold capture window during which the input should not change. 